<laughs> so, how deep rooted do you believe the problem is? Is this just a one off, or do you expect to see the right wing parties making gains in other elections as a protest? What was also interesting was that the Labour Party and the Liberal Democrats were blaming each other and accusing each other of using racist propaganda to try and get themselves elected. Uh, Big Pads, Paddy Ashdown, or Paddy Panstown, you my uh, previous track record, um, he said there's going to be an investigation. I will not have any racism in the Liberal Democrat, whatever they call themselves, party. So what's your reaction to the British National Party winning the first council seat? Is it just a protest vote? I, mean, I suppose you could say that the Nazi party started with the protest vote, vote and look, look what happened there. World War II and all that. But it's not just that, you can talk about anything you want to talk about. 754123 in Wolverhampton, 236235 in Shrewsbury. Did your granny ever give you any good advice? Mine did, you know, she said things like, if you want to live a long and healthful life, don't jump off beachy head and stuff like that. No, grannies would bounce up and down on her knee and say wise and wonderful things. Or well, have you got any wise sayings? Jolly wise sayings. If you've got any of those, we'd like to hear them. Like, don't vote for the BMP and things like that. 754123 in Wolverhampton, 236235 in Shrewsbury. Before we go to the live, let's go through the mail. No point reading this one, because it's not back till Monday. I think. No, no, not back till Monday. Uh, oh, we did it on Monday then, it's a coffee break in Ireland. Uh, it's a car from something's been to Ireland. Dear Ian, I apologise for remaining anonymous, I have good reasons. I agree with every word of the blind caller from Monday, Tuesday night regarding pavement parking. A few years ago, the National Federation of the Blind had a campaign on this problem, but it had no effect whatsoever. I'm partially sighted, registered as blind, but I'm not a member of the Federation. But I still find pavement parking a nuisance, and its after effects Perhaps more so, as the resultant smashed slabbing can mean tripping and smashed person. Vehicles can often be seen behind the black bollards placed to stop them in town. And some places, I won't mention it because you, you do name a carpet company in Darlington Street, but I won't name it. They seem to think that they're a law unto themselves and thereby they can be bone idle and not use a delivery trolley from a van park somewhere further away, but more sensibly and considerately. The problem is, if anything, increasing, particularly around housing areas like Palmer's Cross. Mind you, it's not just vehicles, but other obstacles, such as wheelie bins put out at night in stupid places and left the next day by the collectors in the most convenient for idleness place. The monkey house seemed to have a fetish in this town for putting obstacles in stupid places. And if you look carefully around the town, you'll see metal chairs, and it lists a whole heap here. Overhanging trees, shrubs, tell me about it on a motorbike. Um, I should be writing to the police at their home, 999 Let's Be Avenue, but I bet nothing happens. That's from Stuart. Okay, Stuart. He's actually, uh, the only address we have here is um, Tetton Hall in Wolverhampton, and I happen to know the traffic warden in Tetton Hall. The lovely Betty, wonderful Betty. You probably don't like if she'd given you a ticket, but it's your own fault if you've got a ticket. I'd be amazed, absolutely smegging amazed, if uh, she was allowing anything like that to go on. Ah, uh, Bessie. Here we go, a uh, card for Captain Napalm, that's Eric. Because it's his birthday on the 28th, he's 70 years old, so if you want to send him a card, please feel free to do so. Here we go, my competition, great competition, all you've got to do is look through your magazines, look through your papers. Um, as soon as you see a picture of what you think my boss looks like, do send it me, because in a couple of weeks' time we'll get Mrs. Boss to uh, to judge the competition. Now, who have we got here? We've got, uh, you win yourself a tankard as well. as four prizes of a tankard with culture lovers do it at midnight on it. Here we go. This is uh, Harry Thomas, and he reckons that my boss looks like Roger Melly, the man on the telly, and he sent a Roger Melly picture there. As you can see, if I hold it up to camera one. Dear Ian, having met your boss some years ago, I think that the enclosed picture is as close as you'll get. As I wore out my last tankard from the inside, I really need a new one. I do, you know. Along with your boss, I've also other claims to fame. Mike Reed. I've actually worked with Mike Reed. I did a voiceover on a video with him years ago. Charlie Cray. Ooh, you were nice to him. Jim Davidson of Nick Nick fame. And Freddie Garrity of Wait a Minute fame. I'll ring you with a couple of interesting tales one of the nights. I've also got a belter of a ghost story. Oh, we love our ghost stories. Now, thinking on, just on that 
I, I read something in the paper today, and I'm not telling what it is, but it's, it'll be a surprise. I can't tell you what it is, because with the best will in the world, ghost bus aren't as much fun if there's like 200 people following you around. You know, ghosts tend not to come out, really. So I was thinking of having a word with John Starkey next week, and see if he's game for it. And um, we'll go on a little trip, and we'll do an outside broadcast, you see. It's a good idea, isn't it? Great show. It has to be to keep me up till 2am. The reason yours is better than someone else's is that you love your job and he's completely bored with his, so that, well, you said it. And um, that's Harry Thomas, so thanks Harry. Danny, you sent me a picture of the boss, and it's a potato with a little nose and little arms and um, some Ray Bans on. <laughs> Dear Ian, please find enclosed a small but perfectly formed picture of your boss basking in the sun. I was listening to your show the other night and you were mentioning the competition. You were... I felt strongly but strongly drawn to this picture. I can only say that I was being directed by forces beyond my control. Forever doing it under my covers. A culture lover named Danny. Thanks for that. 267 Technal Road in Wolverhampton, 28 Castle Street in Shrewsbury. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. It's a free thought you can talk about anything you want to talk about, but the big news is that the British National Party have won the very first seat. Is it time to run around like headless chickens? Let's find out from this line here, which is Len. Good morning, Len. Oh, good morning, mate. Good morning, Len. A smile, a song and a conspiracy theory for us. Get on. Hey, it's the first time I've been first on. Is it? Yeah. This will be some mistake. I'll have a word with Sanj. He's answering the phone. <laughs> I thought you were. Not yeah. him. I thought that. <laughs> have a look at note three, Sanj. Len. Five, Len. To, five to two. Five to two. Yeah. No, hang on. Two, two minutes to two. Sorry, Sam. Two minutes to two, Len. We've right. got it. Oh, we've obviously made some dreadful error, and I can only apologise. I gave him the wrong name, actually. Uh -huh. <laughs> anyway, this BNP thing. Hmm. What's wrong with being patriotic, mate? Well, the difference between being patriotic and attacking people on the colour of their skin, isn't it? Um, I think, uh, I'm, I mean, <laughs> let's be right, I'm married to a Philippine girl, yeah? And yet, I can see that there is racialism in this country, and anybody with half a brain can see there's racialism in this country. And that is that what it's reflecting, then? Of course it is. Of course it is. I mean, let's be right. A lot of lefty do-gooders are going to ring up in a minute and say that for bloke was first on is a right racialist. So let me just tell you now, I'm not. Yeah. Right. Before we go any further. Okay, you say so you're let's not. Let's be realistic. Yeah. Ask any of your mates. Go in the pubs and ask people. Go on the streets and ask people. Open your phone lines and ask people. Ask your phone lines, and if, if people if people are truthful, there is um, racialism in this country, and they'll never be accepted. As they they can try to force this country to be a multicultural society from now till doomsday, and there's always going to be a proportion of racialism. I can understand that there is going to be a resistance to it in, in a disillusioned minority, but I mean, you're going back to the 1930s, you're going back to finding scapegoats for, no. for economic disaster. I, no, I don't. I, yes, I'll agree with you that the last five years, the, um, the slump hasn't helped matters. I mean, th that is, an ex that is a, one of the reasons that nationalism becomes prominent. But uh, well, you just said a word then, a small minority. Ian, honestly, mate, it is not a small minority. I reckon 50%. 50% have got some form of racialism, yeah? Whether it's latent, whether it's just talked about now and again, or whether it's talked about... I mean, there aren't many people that go around, you know, with skinhead haircuts, saying, you know, calling everybody coons and whatever they call them. But that in every one of us, there is a... There is a a small bit of racialism, mate. You see, I, I would agree that if you create an underclass, which is what is happening in some areas, with mass unemployment, no hope, bad housing. Yeah. If you create an underclass, you invite a backlash, because the, the political parties, the traditional political parties, have absolutely nothing to offer people. Mm. I, have a, I speak to people, and, they, and I say, well, why don't you vote for the Labour Party? Then they say, because they let all the blacks in. And, and, and that's quite true, that's, that's, a, that's a common statement. Because they let all the blacks in, we'll be swamped. I mean, let's be right. Anybody in the right mind should say, well, enough's enough, let's stop it now, you know? Let's not get racialist about it, but let's just stop the immigration now. You know, let's stop the arranged marriages, let's stop grandfather and grand aunt and whatever coming into the country. Uh, because enough's enough. But well, does, that, does that happen on a grand scale? Oh, it does, yes. See, I, I don't know. It does. Go, oh, go, down, go down to Gatwick and have a look at them coming in. It does happen on a grand scale, mate, honest. I've been there, I know. 
And also, the uh, if you look at the armed forces, look at the armed forces and the police, and I know a lot of police, and if there's any policemen listening in, phone up and tell me I'm wrong. If, if you've there are any policemen there. listening in, hello, hello, hello. Yeah, well, if they've got the guts, yeah, they can ring me up and tell me that I'm wrong. But I tell you what, racialism is rife within the armed forces and the police. I and I know a lot of policemen. I, I, I can't speak for the police, but certainly if you, if you look at the armed forces, there is a certain brigade of guards who admitted the the very first coloured member, yeah, coloured recruit. Mm -hmm. He didn't last the course. No. no. And when he oh, came out, they said, why? And he said, well, I was racially abused, that's why. Yeah, well, so, I I'm not going to argue your phone line, because <coughs> let me just get it through, through that I'm not a racialist, you know. I've got, I've got uh, Pakistani friends, I've got Indian friends, I've got black friends. There's a lot of white people who I don't like. I think they're a load of shit, to be quite honest, but uh, you didn't cut me off, did you? No, you're still there. Uh, that's all right, then. We're all adults. Uh, but, you know, uh, there does come a point where enough is enough, and uh, I think that point has come as far as immigration is concerned. And is that, as far as you believe, what the, the Millwall constituency are telling the rest of the country? Well, my wife's family used to live between, is it the Romford Road and uh, the East End? And I used to go down there sort of every other weekend, and I'm telling you now, it's like little Bangladesh down there. There are millions of them. If you think Birmingham's bad, forget it. Look at them there. There is a complete area, probably about two or three miles square, which is totally Indian, well, mi mixed cultures. You don't know whether it's Indian or whether it's Pakistani. Yeah, but I can't, I can't help thinking that half these people who voted for the British National Party, yeah, they'd they start complaining if they couldn't get a shammy kebab. <laughs> oh, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because every, every culture that comes into a country brings something with it. I know. And what? that's worth having. And I know, okay, there's positives and negatives to <coughs> absolutely everything in the world, but it seems to me that these guys, they, they only want to see the negatives. Well, yeah, but I mean, a lot of people, you know, when they see guys walking around with white caps on and, and flowing robes and, and women permanently dressed in, in say, uh, and what do they call it? Uh, saris. Saris with little dots on their heads, they, the first thing they say is, well, you know, if they want to dress like that and have their own religion... Well, hold on, just hold on, culture, just hold on. Why did they come here in the first place? Just why hold on, right, where they came from? right, one moment, young man. Well, no, right, that's what right, at the, right at the moment, I'm wearing an Ireland World Cup 94 T-shirt. Now, does that mean that I should go and live in Ireland if I want to wear that? No, but you know what I mean, don't you? Well, not at all. You can yeah. dress how you want to dress. Well, sure you can, but, you know, it's like... Well, I'm telling you what's said on the streets, Ian. Yeah? Not by you. Um, I think, well, I don't know, I'm a floater. I think if it doesn't, if it, if it, somebody doesn't do something about it now, Ian, there could be trouble in the future. So well, we know what floats, be sensible, eh? We know what floats, mate. All right, mate. All right, then. I won't argue your phone, and thanks for letting me come on first. It was an accident, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> right. All the best, mate. Ta-ra. Ta -ra. There we go, Len, with some pretty strong views regarding the British National Party and the election victory in Millwall. What do you believe about it? 754123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. We'll be back to the lines after this award-winning commercial break. Break away with Deacon Radio and Bucklands for Starco's World Book Alley North Wales. Jimmy James and the Vagabonds, Sam Borgman, Freddie Starr and the Hollies are just some of the names inviting you to join them. There are 25 free breaks to be won with a full programme of activities and top entertainment. To win, stay tuned to Beacon Radio and you could be enjoying a superb self-catering break for a family of four at Starco's World Book Alley with Bucklands and Beacon. This is a public notice from Dreamworld. Due to major showroom alterations currently taking place, Dreamworld are clearing quality three-piece suites, including leather, from just £395 and are currently offering two years interest-free credit and up to £500 part exchange on your old suite. Dreamworld also stock a wide range of carpets and beds. They'll even take your old bed away free of charge. Remember, Dreamworld offers two years interest-free credit. Ask for written details. The clearance sale is now on at Dreamworld. Open seven days a week in Stolling Flame, Kings Winford. See local press for opening time. Well, it's so easy to buy a street and dream world. Learn to defend yourself. Samson Martial Arts offer you the chance to learn kickboxing, kung fu or freestyle karate to enjoy as a sport and as a form of self-defense. The SMA Centre cater for all. Men, women and children, class, group and individual tuition. Special self-defense classes available for women and children. The SMA full-time gym puts safety first on matted floors with supervision by professional black belt instructors. Enroll now and receive your free uniform at Samson Martial Arts for more Centre, Bradley Hill. Call Dudley 483-628. How much are you paying for your video rental? 
Richards will beat it. Guaranteed. For written details, call Richards free on 0800 626 483. Nursing Care Midlands are the specialist suppliers of products for nursing and residential homes. All requirements are catered for, including incontinence products, waterproof bedding, capital equipment and medical sundries. Plus, there's a full range of furniture and hygiene products, and all with speedy delivery. And if you need advice, they'll visit you. Nursing Care Midlands are here to serve. So if there's something you need that isn't in stock, they'll order it for you. For reliable nursing products and professional advice from qualified nurses, call Nursing Care Midlands for a free catalogue on 0384 480099. That's 0384 480099. <laughs> Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. It's a free-for-all, but most people are electing to talk about the BMP's victory in Millwall. If that's what you want to do, that's fine. What does it mean to you? Especially if, if you're a member of um, an ethnic group. How, how do you feel about that? Well, what sort of messages does it send to you? We've got Vicky next. Good morning, Vicky. Morning. Good morning. What can we do for you? Oh, I just want to talk about what he's on about. Just a minute, about the one guy he found up from going about Christmas. Christmas. And that he was unemployed in... Ah, uh, yes, he was saying that he uh, he was unemployed yeah. and he wasn't looking forward to Christmas and he was desperately trying to save as much as he possibly could to try and give the kids a good Christmas, at which point I harshly said, or was it harshly, nobody yeah. has a right to Christmas. Yeah, because you told him about cancelling it or something. Yeah, why not cancel it? Yeah. That's what I I'd do if I didn't have any money. I mean, I'm unemployed as well. I mean, what's happening from going out and buying the peasants food the year like I've done? forward planning. Yeah. Maybe think maybe he doesn't have any money over. I mean, what you could do is walk outside, shoot a gun in the air, come back and tell him Santa Claus has committed suicide. No, I mean, the money that um, we get, I mean, we're on a reduced payment and we can still do it and pay the bills and everything. You're on a reduced payment from who? Social. So what you do is you save throughout the year? No, we just buy when we got, um, for, like, when we ain't got bills to pay. So if you have a month with no bills... Then we do it. You zip out, and you buy some Christmas presents. Yep. Do you think it's overrated, Christmas? No. Oh. I mean, Christmas is what you make it. Oh, yeah, we have a lap in the uh, in the Perry and Dilner households, but... Um, well, it doesn't have to be expensive. I don't want to bet. You met my mother. No, I mean... It's <laughs> Do you mean it doesn't have to be expensive? It doesn't. <laughs> I mean, you spend what you want. Do you want to eat the turkey or wear it? She always a present before dinner. Not good enough, no dinner. Turkey, though. Oh, dear me. I'm a traditionalist. I want that. I mean, my mother in law, she has chicken. Well, she gives the budgie chest expanders, does she? She has chicken on Christmas Day? Yeah. God, that's tight, that is. That's what we had last year. Chicken? Yeah. Oh, no, I'm a traditionalist. Gotta have me turkey Christmas Day. It's gotta be done. In fact, there was, a, there was a big uprising last year between the, um, the Perry factions who wanted a traditional Christmas and the, the other Perry modernist factions who decided that Marks and Spencer's turkey portions were what we were having this year. I'm afraid to say that the modernists won. There we go, that's Vicky. Uh, I've got to move on, Vicky, because we're dead busy. But uh, Vicky says, um, if you're worried about Christmas, the thing to do is to plan ahead and careful pruning of the budgeting and constant saving over a 12-month period We'll ensure you a very Merry Christmas. Only September, what are we talking about Christmas for? Anyway, Steve's nice, good morning. How are you doing? Good morning, Steve. Yeah, mate. What can we do for you? Uh, back to the BMP. The British National Party? Yeah. Uh, I think, well, what I want to say is for me, I think for many other British people, I think it's a good thing that last, the silent majority is actually being heard and represented in Britain. The silent majority? You, you believe the majority of people are racists? The majority of white people in Britain are not racist. No, I wouldn't say racist. I'm definitely not racist. I don't think I don't think it's under the colour of someone's skin. I think it's just a case of that. I don't think it's just a case to do with colours. It's it's all about history. It's all about it's all about your race and your belonging. I think Britain's lost the sense of identity. And I think the British people want it back. Oh, well, I still feel British, don't you? Yeah, definitely. I do. You could take that two ways, really, couldn't you? Well, yeah. Um, no, I still, I still, yeah, I mean, I've always felt that I was British, red, white and blue and hurrah for the Union Jack and all that. And I, I don't honestly believe that a lot of that's, I don't believe that's changed. Oh, I do, definitely. Definitely, I think the media have changed that a great deal lately. 
The one thing I can see, it is seen as fascist. The Union Jack is seen as a fascist thing. I think that is absolutely disgusting. I think I just think it's a great thing that the race issue is back out in the open and back on the agenda. I think it's an important issue, uh, and I think it affects everyone in Britain. Yeah, I think that you could reach a situation which I believe would be unhealthy. And I, I think a similar situation has already been reached in Germany. Definitely. Where yeah. people will not talk about racism or the issues that racism throws up because the scared are being branded a racist. Definitely. So what happens is then they don't talk about it. And when they don't talk about it, then all these myths start. And people start to believe the myths. It's like this underground movement starts, and then all of a sudden, somebody like the British National Party comes along and taps into that. Yeah. And wham, there's an expression of, of pent-up feeling. I, another thing I saw, I mean, I don't know how true it is, is, is one of the, the problems with, uh, with local councils is that they're only really of interest to local councillors. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't think... I think once, once they get there, they, they, get, um, they get into the planet council. Yeah, and, and they stop relating to the real issues, and they seem to want to act with with incredible political correctness. I think, yeah, which, which precludes asking some very, very searching questions because yeah. they don't want to ask those in case someone says racist, racist. You're a racist. You are definitely, but it's it's the fascist, it's the fascist label that I really cannot stand. Michael T. Now I'm a member of the National Front. And you don't like being called a fascist? No way at all. But come on, the pinup boy for October was Adolf Hitler. Definitely not. Definitely not. 26 ways to shine your jack boots. The National Front and na the annual conference of the National Front was on Sunday. And believe me, there was no fascist in that room. Nationalism is not Nazi. It but, cannot but, be called but, but Nazi. The leader, it, who's, the, who's the leader of the National Front? Martin something, isn't he, it? No, no, no. He's long gone, thank God. He's um, with the BMP loonies. The thing with the BMP, I think they were voted down their policies, which were nationalist, not on the people. Have you met any BMP people? I tell you, I haven't. Having a look at them, I don't think I'd want to get too close. No, I wouldn't. The loonies, I say, they really are loonies. But I think they've been voted in on their their policies more than the people. And what, what, what exactly the people were? Are openly fascist. What, what exactly were their policies? The policies, well, traditional nationalist policies. Which I've been seen as right wing, but no, I would I call them right wing. What? Send everybody who didn't have a great, 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 great grandfather born in the centre of England back to wherever it was. There's a lot more to nationalist policies than just the race issue. We've got against terrorism, against the IRA, who stands up and declares himself against the IRA. Really? Who the does? Conservative party, the Conservative party do nothing at all. The Labour Party do nothing. Liberals do nothing. I think I've sort of worked out the SAS. I've sort of worked out the SAS. I've worked out the SAS were against the National Front. Oh, against, sorry, against, against the, uh, no, against the IRA. Against the National Front. No, sorry, I meant IRA. Same side, I think. And uh, the totally free NHS service. So, that, so these are these are the National Front policies, are they? Now, Definitely. why why the do we, policies, yeah. why do we never hear these? Because, who are you going to hear them off? But the media, and the media are not very quick to support the National Front, are they? So are you telling me that the National Front has changed? Because I remember it from the 1970s. Oh, Ian, Ian. It, it, in 1970, OK, there was a party called the National Front. In 1993, it is not at the same party at all. OK, the numbers have decreased a lot. But all those people have gone over to the BNP, who are now the skinhead fascist movement in this country as I see, but the National Front are different, and, and but the BNP have got National Front policies basically, they've got nationalist policies, but the people, that they, that's where the difference is, it's the people in it. The BNP, the National Front, you look at their statements of policy, you look at their newspapers, the flag for the National Front, the British Nationalists for the BNP, and it says exactly the same things, but you look at the members, and National Front members are, are Mr. Mr. Joe Bloggs on the street, who really is. I was at the conference last week and I was absolutely amazed how, how everyone was well turned out. Normal British people, and it was really, for me, heartwarming to see. But the BNP, they go and bow, they're beating up whoever, that Asian lad who's in hospital. Yeah, I'll probably, I do agree that it was probably the BNP who did it. And no way do I condemn the BNP party members' actions. So you're saying that the, the National Front is no longer racially based? Oh God, yeah, definitely, definitely. It is dedicated to a a white Britain. It is dedicated to Britain being returned to the what we see as the true British. And what what are the true British? The true British. 
Not mm. the two, the true. That's what I said. British, the white. So if I, the white British? The white British, yeah. That's lunacy, isn't it? Well, no. I mean, no, not only, not only is it lunacy, no, I don't think not it is. only is it lunacy, I mean, it, it, it's basically sticking a bag over your head and trying to get away from realism. I mean, realistically, the world is a multicultural so. society. I think, so. I think if you talk to a lot of these ethnic minorities, you talk to a lot of them, okay, you've seen it, you've seen the, the flags, you've seen the little car stickers with the Jamaican flag, You've seen Nansworth Carnival celebrating their culture. It's their culture, and they call themselves Jamaicans more than they do British. Obviously, you've got a few wear the England top to the England matches. Okay, they wear cob chops, as that lad was saying earlier. Oh, no, sorry, that was the other station. I didn't think of it. And, um, yeah, you've got some who... So you're the one who's British, been listening? But, oh, sorry, yeah, I was listening to uh, WMA. Double, double, double the audience for him, did oh, you? I'm sorry, yeah. Um, and yeah, you do get some of those, but I think the majority of them are proud to be Pakistani. You look at the mosques, how many mosques have we got in? Well, why shouldn't you have mosques? Well, exactly. It is their culture, and I believe they should keep it. But I do not think there's a place in Britain. I do not feel that these people really call themselves British. I can't believe they call themselves British. I'm sure they don't. I think they are proud to be Pakistani, proud to be Bengali. And I think with funded repatriation, I think you'd be surprised how many would actually take it up. And what, what, what would this achieve exactly? In Britain, well, I do not feel that Britain can survive as a racially mixed country. I do not believe that. I don't think a multicultural Britain will ever work. I don't want to sound pessimistic or nothing. I really do not believe that black, white, Asian people will ever really get on or like each other. I do not believe it will happen. I think the troubles, if it goes on, just as it is now with Tories, Labour's, Liberals, Socialist Workers Party even, they're just ignoring it, sweeping it under the carpet, we can all get on. Well, it's all exactly. Now, it's all I do not believe that actually, is true. You've actually said one thing that I agree with there, which is unless the major political parties confront uncomfortable issues... Definitely. Then, unless they do that, then, that, then the right wing of this country, the right wing political parties, are going to grow in strength. Of course, yeah, I think it is absolutely There is lunacy. no point hiding from realism. If there are racial tensions there, you need to address them. Definitely, it's staring them in the face tonight, and I'll watch news night tonight, news night tonight. It has stared them in the face tonight, and still they will not admit that there is a problem. They will not admit there is a problem. They're calling it a very small minority. It's not a small minority, of course it's not. 34%, was it? 33, 34% have voted in the Isle of Dogs. Um, it really is not a small, a small majority at all. It is, as I called it earlier, the silent majority, it really is. Um, if we're looking to answers. The country's in a state. I think the British people are looking for answers out of it. And I think the Labour Party are offering absolutely nothing. The Tories, well, they've got us into it and they're not going to get us out of it. But are the, the right Liberals are offering nothing. And the Socialist Worker Party, Communism, no thank you very much. The right British wing parties, really. though, are only offering scapegoats, aren't they? Well, no. no it's not scapegoating, is it? It's a, it is a true answer. It's a true answer. Do you. Do you Ian, do you really think a multicultural Britain will ever work? I think it has to, because it's going to be a part of a multicultural world. Well, no. I, think, I mean, I, I mean I what, what, what are you, what are you going to do next? Are you going to say, right, well, we can't have a multicultural Britain, we're just going to have Britain for British people, and then what we're going to do is, uh, we're not going to trade with the rest of Europe, because they're Europeans. <laughs> you can't live in glory. I think it is. I think, I think the world's got to be of the same climate for this repatriation to really work, and I think it is working that way. You look at Germany, the fascists are getting in, OK, OK? Because people are scared and it's desperation, that's what the fascists are getting in. But the nationalists should be getting in over there and they are doing well. In Italy, the nationalists are doing well. In France, the Front National with Jean-Marie is an excellent leader. They're doing very well. They are the third main political party over there. Excellent. They said it's doing well. And He's off his Japan, box. Pardon? He's off his box. It is doing well all over the world. I suppose Eugene Terreblanche is really a great guy. He's kind to old ladies and loves animals. <laughs> the AWB. Um, but I really do believe that nationalism is on the is on the rise, and not maybe on the march Europe wide. I think it, the world has to be of the same climate for it really to all work. And I think it is working that working that way. Problem is, a lot of people remember the last time the right wing went on the march. Um, so the first tour date was Poland, and the rest of it was a bit unhappy. Tell you what, you stay on the line, stay where you are. We're going to take a commercial break, then we'll take some more calls. 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. Feel the rhythm every Sunday night on Beacon with Tag Talking Loud, presented by Charles Peterson. We'll be exploring the very best in the ever-growing field of jazz, rock, soul and punk. 
Every show features an album of the week, jazz connection, and a world exclusive. For deep, powerful, always melodic music, be here every Sunday night at 7 for Talking Loud. Brought to you by Tag Export Beer. How much are you paying for your TV rental? Richards will beat it, guaranteed. For written details, call Richards free on 0800 626 483. Call into the Manda Center this week and see the world's first beer-making machine. This British invention has created headlines all over the world as people are amazed when tap water is turned into full-strength, pub-quality lager in just a few seconds. In addition to concentrates for all the popular soft drinks, mixers, and diet ranges already made by the machine, gin and tonic and vodka and lemonade are also to be introduced before Christmas. With soda, whiskey and dry ginger, sparkling wine, bitter, and other favorites planned for next year, it looks as though the days of user-unfriendly bottles and cans could be numbered. Costing just under £100, this machine could prove to be the Christmas gift of 1993. Sales of this incredible invention are being made through a private network of distributors, providing an excellent business opportunity for anyone with an aptitude for selling. As part of the scheme, you'll be in at the start of what promises to be a multi-billion dollar worldwide expansion program. No capital outlay or previous experience is required, so anyone interested in becoming either a full or part-time distributor should visit the Manda Center this week or call Wolverhampton 726-951 for further details. That's Wolverhampton 726-951. Look to the skies. Prepare to be amazed. It's the spectacular Warsaw Illuminations. It's the biggest and brightest event of its kind in the country. The children will thrill as they see their favorite characters brought to life and watch the laser dancing over the lake and into the night sky. Don't miss the Warsaw Illuminations at the Warsaw Arboretum between the 4th of September and the 17th of October. For details, call Warsaw 653-148. It's a dazzling night out. <laughs> Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. It is a free-for-all, but most people electing to talk about the British National Party. We just spoke to Steve. He said that he's a member of the National Front. And as far as he's concerned, you can't equate the National Front with fascism. Could have fooled me, but that's what Steve says. Who's next? On this line here, it's Wayne. Good morning, Wayne. Oh, good morning. Good morning. What can um, I do you for? Right. Uh, I want to talk about the race, that idiot, just before, right? But before, um, did you get my picture of your boss? Which one was that? It was the bloke with the green shirt on. I haven't had it yet, no. Um, it was sent with the Russian photos. Oh, yes, I did. In which case I did. Yes, you drew it, didn't you? Yeah, did it look anything like him? Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, I'll bring that in and explain it on Monday right. for you. Secondly, I'd like to congratulate you um, being ripped off. Um, Julian Dix from West Ham has gone to Liverpool and we've got David Burroughs, Mike Marsh and 1.2 million. Yeah, you've got Burroughs. <laughs> <laughs> you've got Dix. <laughs> because, yeah, but I've been working this out that... Um, the Liverpool defence will now largely consist of Captain Haddock, right, which yeah. is near Ruddock, and Julian Dix. Now, if you've got those two snarling away in our half, I can't actually see any forward wanting to go into our half. They're all going to be arguing on the centre circle. It's your turn, I went last time, I'm not going again. So, yeah, <laughs> intimidation rules, KO. Well, I, I think it's been overrated, it's overpriced, and I think we've got an excellent deal. With Burroughs? Mm -hmm. Oh dear. But anyway... Oh, he could sell handbags, Graham, soon. <laughs> but anyway, that bloke who's just on before is an absolute idiot. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Now, first of all, is it right, or am I correct in saying, that the only reason why you've got ethnic minorities over here is that ages ago, when Britain took over the Caribbean, India, Australia, they thought it would be a good idea to send all the rich people over there and allow all the inhabitants of the islands to come over and live in Britain. So is there a pure greed that they're here? Yeah, I, I understand that. But right. I, okay, well, how would you answer his point then, where he said, why are certain key elements of, or key people in ethnic minorities, why are they not patriotic? Sorry, can you say that again? Why, why are certain key people in ethnic groups not patriotic? And, uh, well, it's their, take, own take, it's their own culture though, isn't it? But I don't... Is it, I mean, it's like you... Is it OK for somebody of a different culture to burn a Union flag during the Gulf War? Right, but I mean, it's like if you moved over to France now, you're not going to be a Frenchman, are you? You're going to carry on 
Union Jack, you know, you're English. Well, no, you see, I mean, I... Ultimately, I want to retire to, to a place called Licardo's, which is near Palioca Street, on Corfu, right? That's right. what I want to do. Now, it's about 20 years off, but when I go there, then I'll become a Greek. Well, I think it's your own choice. You know, I mean, if you go over to another country and you're going to live over there, I mean, you can either follow their culture or your own culture. I mean... Well, the Greek culture, well, I, don't, I can't speak for the Greek culture in general, but certainly as far as Lacardes goes, appears to uh, consist upon sitting round in bars, drinking ouzo and playing cards. <laughs> and I think I could fit quite happily into that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I think the only thing you can moan at is, eff is um, immigrants that are over here that don't belong over here, who've took, like, you know, a free passage over here. They're not, um, they, claim, they can't claim dole or anything, but they're living in houses. I mean, that you can moan about, but... You know, not the other ethnic minorities that are actually allowed to be here. Are, are certain ethnic groups overrepresented at council level? Is this what the Millwall I think election they are was in saying? A certain way. I mean, I don't agree with like um, schools for Asian kids and you know and so forth. I don't think. What, what about right. Church of England schools? Is that right? I think it is in a way because I mean it's Britain. I mean that isn't one of the main religions, tradition and all that stuff. But like. Some of it is overrated. Sorry, wh which bits are overrated? I mean, no, I mean, like, um, you know, mosques everywhere and stuff like that. I mean, it is a little bit overrated and people do moan about it, but um, I think that's the way it is. I think it's a price Britain had to pay, isn't it? So we're just paying the price of our ancestors? I think so, yeah. Okie dokie, thanks for that, Wayne. I will bring your picture in on Monday, I promise. I remember. It's on my, um, where is it? It's on my, it's on my radio, of all places. <laughs> all right? All right, then. Thanks for that. Right, bye. ta -ra. Next on the lines, where's my list? Um, we got Eric. On this line, with the most famous catchphrase in the entire history of the cosmos, Big E. Marching inexorably forward towards his 70th birthday, and I wish I knew what inexorably meant, because I, look, I must look it up when I go home. I'll do that. Come on, Eric! You must have recognised it's you, Eric. Here it comes. He's coming in. He's arriving. Mr. Eric is here, folks. I am hanging on, Eric. I find myself with very, very few alternatives but to hang on right at this present moment in time. Good morning, Eric. Are you there? Is that you? Yeah! It is you. Good morning, <coughs> Eric. Huh? Good morning. Now then, you. Now then, Eric. Do you want to turn your radio down? This thing's too high. That thing is too high. If you're going to dial through to the midnight line at Beacon and WABC, do turn your radio down. Now then, Big E. Turning his, his wireless down. <laughs> good to know the delay's working. Count your knees or something. Uh, good, good morning, Eric. Good morning, here. What can we do for you? I never did such a load of tummy load of the the rot in all my life. So it's a normal sort of show. Yeah. Uh, he talks about the National Front. There should be no marches as regards politics in this country, bar three, and that's Liberal, Labour and Tory. But in a democracy you have the right to say what you want to say, don't you? Yeah, you can live in democracy, but he's, he's on about the way he was putting it that uh, he's a bigger racist than I thought. Who because is? he said, that bloke said, as a white man, the real English white man. That's what he said. Right? But if a German comes over here, a German couple or comes over here, maybe if her pregnant and her comes over in this country and has her baby in this country, that's an English baby, isn't it? Well, it's born in England, yeah. Of course it is. So if, a, if part of the blacks is born in this country, they ain't English. Yeah, I would have thought so. Right? If they'd born, whatever country they'd born in, it's that nationality business. Does it, does it really matter where you're born? No. We put on this earth to live with one another and to, and to, to get on with one another. 
there's no room for hatred and jealousy and, and, and greed in this in this world, shouldn't there be? So, you know, I look at the, the situation in Croatia and the situation in Bosnia and I think, my God, how backward. Fancy still fighting about that in this day and age. And then something like this happens in Millwall, you know, that it, that it obviously is an issue to some people. Yeah. But when you look at it here, um, I can't understand English people myself because they're on about the black people. They, they're on about the coloured people, right? <clears throat> Yet half of the coloured people and half of the white people do the muggings and the, and, and the, the break-ins and that. They do that together, so why do not they live in, co in, in harmony with one another? So if you can commit crime together, you can live in harmony together. Of course they can. Isn't that right? I think a lot of what we're seeing in Millwall is probably born out of frustration. The, I mean, it really shocked me to watch um, a woman on the telly say, I, she actually said, if you're white, it takes you eight years to get a council house. If you're black, you can have one in a week. Now, that isn't true, but she believes it's true. And because of that, she voted for the British National Party because she believes that that's true. Well, here, you know, <coughs> there was a bloke on the raid on television who said the same thing about uh, the reason they voted for this uh, BNP or whatever it is was because uh, if the <coughs> biggest part of them are Asians, the biggest part of the whole of this 12 houses on this one st uh, state went to an Asian families. But if that's where the need's greatest, that's what council houses are for, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's, uh, our council's got so much on its dish, it doesn't really... We know they can be monkey houses, we know they can be rots, we know they can, they can, uh, uh, sort of, if your face don't fit, you don't get nothing. But they, they have got a job on because Perhaps on one state they can give an Asian family uh, a, 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 a house, right? And the next minute the state's shouting out about, I've been after an house for so long, I can't get one. You know? But that, that's when the council becomes the focal point of racial tensions, doesn't it? That's where, that's where the racial tensions come in. But you see, my argument is that if there is racial tension in this country, and I believe it, that there probably is, I also believe that it's, um, it's, it's an undercurrent, because people won't talk about it by and large, because it's not politically correct to do so. But I reckon that you, the major political parties have got to get it out in the open, get it talked about, and neutralise it, and do it now. Before it's too late. Absolutely. Because... Uh, all right, they're building their own temples and this and the other. Uh, the Pakistanis and Indians, they got their own religion, their own temples and that. But sometimes some of them go too far, but the government does nothing about it. They just sit back and let them get on with it. And then when there's a riot by the people... Camp guard Ivan the Terrible has been freed from an Israeli prison. He'd spent seven years behind bars. Israel's Supreme Court had ruled he can return to the United States and shouldn't face trial for any other alleged war crimes. Independent Radio News. The weather, presented by Premier, direct from John Warner's satellite, Meteosat 4. Okie dokie, that'll be me then, would it? It's, um, rain. That's what we're having during the first half of the night. Towards dawn, the showers have become widespread. The overnight low, 9 Celsius, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. Later today, wet to start with, but sunny uh, periods in the afternoon. Top temperature, 17 Celsius, 63 degrees Fahrenheit. The outlook, dry for most of Thursday, but rain Thursday night and Friday. The air quality is very good, so you can breathe as much as you want. Temperature now, 9 Celsius, 48 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> Okie dokie, me old culture lovers. It's the Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Lines are open till 
round about two o'clock. What have we got for you? Well, we got a lot of mail. The midnight line seems to attract uh, quite a high proportion of male for some reason. And females, of course. And occasionally you get quite a, a sort of evocative letter. And that's been the case over... Well, it came yesterday. So, I'll read you the letter. And the letter says this. Dear Ian, I'm 24 years old. I've recently separated from my husband after I discovered he was bisexual. To make matters worse, I've also discovered that I'm pregnant by him. I have a job, but I'd lose that if I had the child. I'm writing to ask you if you think I should have the baby or an abortion. I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. I feel such hate for my husband that I don't know if I could ever love his child. I've always been against abortion, but I'm so upset I don't know what to do. I don't feel I have anybody I can talk to please help. And that's just signed Marie. So, we'll throw it open and get everybody's opinions on it. What exactly do you think Marie should do? She was married. The marriage looks like it's going to break up. She's got a big downer on her husband, because it must have come as, as a big shock, as opposed to discover that he's bisexual. So, she basically hates the husband. She thinks she's going to hate the baby. She's considering having an abortion. Well, I, I mean, I'm a bloke. What do I know about abortions? But have you ever been in a similar position? Or not even a similar position. Have you been in a position where you've had to think about whether or not you had a child? Maybe that'd help her, if you could talk about that. But you don't have to have been in a situation like this to have an opinion. What's your opinion? What do you believe she should do? I mean, if she did have an abortion, then is that just making abortion a sort of retrospective contraceptive. I mean, at the end of it, however angry she may be, and however let down she may feel, you can't really take it out on the, the unborn baby, can you? Or is she, she's worried that she's never going never gonna to be able to love this child. Is that the case? Or would she feel differently towards the child after she'd had it? 754-123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. <clears throat> Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. What would you do or what, what advice would you give to Marie? Should she have an abortion? She's obviously feeling pretty down at the moment. So what would your advice be to her? We'll go to the lines in a moment. First of all, on a slightly, well in fact an excessively lighter note. Um, where's it gone? I didn't know Everton supporters could write, but apparently they can. Uh, admittedly, if I hold it up to camera three, as you see, it's not actually joined at writing. Though I'm very impressed because it is actually written in a pen. Or, or it's written with a pen. Because normally they don't let Evertonians have pens because they don't let them have anything sharp. It says, Dear Ian, just a quick note on my team's performance on Saturday, Everton. Yes, that's right, we slaughtered you 2-0. You were lucky it weren't five. You were lucky it wasn't five. It's plain for all to see which Merseyside team will finish highest. Although I haven't lived in Liverpool, I visit it very often and it's a better city than London and I believe our fans epitomise the behaviour that is needed in Europe, which is where Everton will be next season. Ha! <laughs> yeah. Why, what have they done then? Arrange, arranged a pre-season friendly with uh, Marseille mixed in from second eleven. Just one final thing. The bloke who phoned up about accents, I just wonder if Plank of the Month stroke year has already been decided. Yours sincerely, the Scouser, Walsall, West Midlands. Well, thank you so much, but don't forget, you have still to face us in the return leg. Well, Captain Howe, you see, the thing is, now we've signed Ruddock and we signed Dix, then um, we know we can't win the league this season, so what we're doing is we're going for Lonsdale Belt. Who else has been writing? Dear Ian, please don't use my name. Marge from Birmingham will do. I'm sending you my ration book, and I don't want it back. OK, well, so there you go, because I'm still trying to work out exactly, exactly what my Second World War rations for a week would have been as soon as I've, I've worked it out. Because as soon as I think I've worked it out, somebody sends me some new information, it all changes. Well, <clears throat> this is your actual ration book, and it's, it's got the stamps in it. A.G. Wilcox Limited in Beckbury Road. That's where you got your meat. You got your fats from Tasco's. Was it Tasco's? Yeah, probably an early forerunner of Tesco's, I would imagine. Well, that was in Castle Square. And bacon, again, from A.G. Wilcox Limited. There you go. And uh, your actual ration book. I'll see if I can use this at me butcher, see what he says. Anyway, Marge goes on to say, um, that was my ration book, I don't want it back. The birthday card 
is for Eric. I hope it's not too cheeky. I've read it, and no, it isn't too cheeky, and he'll love it, don't worry. It's Eric's birthday on the 28th of this month, so if you want to send him a card, you can drop it into the station, or post it into the station, I'll forward them on to him. Um, what else does she go on to say? Um, she loves the show, that's very, 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 very kind of you. And good luck with your wartime diet. The rich could afford food, you know, on the black market. What's happened to Ken? Ken was on last night, Marge. I wonder if we'll have him on again tonight. Who can tell? So, uh, thanks for that. You're very kind. Who else has been writing? Oh, a listener called. My listener in Wensby called. This is how they treat me at this station. Ian, your listener called from Wensby. He wants to know if you can let him know on air when you're having a psychic guest interview. Ooh, I don't know. I keep saying I'll phone John Starkey, so... Uh, I suppose I'd better find John Starkey, really, at some point. Ian Perry's Midnight Line, Samantha Arkinstall in Stafford Road. One of your biggest fans. Please play a request. OK, well, we'll dedicate the featured album between one and two to you, Samantha. Also, Pat Richards in Bromford Lane. She's been writing. She says, Hello, Ian. Many thanks for Super Talk Back Radio Show every evening. I still haven't gained enough courage to give you a call, but never mind. Perhaps one of these nights I may just make it. Could you please pass on the enclosed birthday card for Eric? Bless him for me. He's a superhuman being, wonderful human being, and may continue to be that for a long, long time. Also, if you can play for me Freddie Mercury singing The Great Pretender, well, funnily enough, the best of Freddie Mercury is our featured CD album between one and two this morning. Isn't that a coincidence? I don't mind which ones, because she said I could play the Platters one as well, but please don't get into any trouble with that man of a boss you have. I wouldn't, I wouldn't. Uh, no, he's, he's cool, he's all right. I wouldn't wish that on anyone. Also, could you have... Do you know him? Also, could I have an up-to-date photograph of you? Many, many thanks. Please keep up the good work. Kind regards. And thanks to your partner in crime, David Myatt. What a duo you make. Take care. Safe and happy biking. Pat Richards. All right, so that's coming up between one and two. Featured CD album, Best of Freddie Mercury. This is The Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC. Let's find out. Who's on line five? Forgotten. Linda. Because you told me a long time ago, and I forgot now. I'll write that down so I don't forget. OK, once more, very briefly through the letter. Dear Ian, I'm 24 years old. I've separated from my husband. I discovered he was bisexual. I'm writing to ask you... I'm pregnant. I'm writing to ask you, should I have the baby or should I have an abortion? I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. I feel such hate for my husband that I don't know if I could ever love his child. That's a, a letter from Marie. So... What advice would you give to Marie? 754123 in Wolverhampton, 236, 235 in Shrewsbury on this line here. I know because I've written it down. It's Linda, good morning. Hello. Doing it for the first time. Yeah. So to speak. Yes. Ooh, er. Uh, pretty uh, sad letter. Uh, very, very sad. Because they always say, don't they, just when you think it can't possibly get any worse, it suddenly does. Yes. And so she's probably in a bit of a state. What, what would your advice be? Um, my first advice would be before she actually decides anything he's to go for to see a doctor to counseling to to anything i have had two abortions you've had two yes might i ask what was your reasoning behind not having them um financial i was single uh left on my own in very very not not the same circumstances but they're pretty similar aren't they very similar yes but Please, please, I would beg her to, to, to before she decides anything, to seek counselling, medical advice, complete, complete strangers if she has to, Samaritans, whatever. Because I deeply, deeply regret the two I, I had. So you, you didn't get any advice? No, no. You, you didn't get any counselling. Is it, is it available? Um, I've found out since, yes. Because um, they don't exactly go out of the way to promote it. No. Um, if you look in the personal columns of the Express and Star this evening, you will find people offering abortions and whatever. If you have the money, they will do it. So the, the, if you have the money, they will do the abortion? Private clinics, private associations, yes. So, so the abortion bit's pretty well publicised. Yes. But the alternatives aren't? No. No, it's not. It's not even the alternatives. They they publicise the actual abortion. It's quite. It, it is quite easy if you have the money. What what these people are advertising and, and the private clinics do not say, 
or do not cancel you for is the after effects of the abortion. That's when you're left to deal with it on your own? Yes. Is help uh, uh, of that nature available? No. So it's just down to you? Yeah. And I, I can, I mean, I sympathise tremendously with her, her situation. I mean, it, it, it must, it, well, it's unbelievable. It, it is something that... It's your worst nightmare, isn't it's it? It's your worst nightmare, yes. To find out that your husband is bisexual and then to find out that you're pregnant as well. I mean, the, the, the major thing that must be going through her mind is, is AIDS. Yes, I suppose it must. That must be the... I mean, if he is being bisexual during their relationship, has, has it been passed on? See, she says, she says here that she doesn't believe that she could ever love his child. Is that just a, a result of how she feels at the moment? Yes. Do, do you believe that would change? Yes. Yeah. Because that child, once the child is, is actually born, you don't even, even see the other person. I mean, I went on to have um, two more pregnancies after my two abortions. My first pregnancy after my two abortions ended very, very drastically, very, very sadly. But I went on after that to have a perfectly healthy, gorgeous, blue-eyed, blonde little girl. And... And did that, did that underline to you what you'd missed? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The third... I had two abortions. The third pregnancy I had... Um, because of because of the abortions, and they, I have been told by my specialist and all the rest of it, my my son was born 13 weeks premature because of the abortions, because of they had my body been misdrained so much, and um, he died and he was four weeks old, and so I lost a son through it. And you, you firmly believe that that was the cause? Oh yeah, there was no doubt about it. There was definitely the cause. There was no doubt about it whatsoever. Did it, did anybody at any point try to talk you out of it? No. No. Did you tell anybody? No. All I told was my... I went along to... Um, well, I, I don't suppose I can name the associations, but I went along... I don't see why not. Well, uh, the, the Marie Rose Clinic or Maria Rose Clinic. Uh-huh and the British Pregnancy Association, British Pregnancy Advisory Service. So you went along to them? Yeah. Um, this, uh, the first time I went along to the um, Marie Rose at, at thingy, on the hand, and she adver they advertised in the um, personal column of the Express and Star. And I went along and I was given a pregnancy test and a, a blood pressure reading and, and, and blah, blah, blah. And I was internally examined and I was told I was 12 weeks pregnant or whatever. And if I'd got so X amount of pounds, I mean, I'm going back now probably 12 years. But even then it was a business. Oh, did, yeah. did you feel that it was being run as a business rather than, say, run in your best interest? Yeah. The second time I was 24 weeks pregnant. 24? Yeah. Um, if my math serves me right, that's six months, isn't it? Yeah. And they still gave you an abortion at six months? I had to give birth, not an abortion. I had to give birth. They're it, totally different things. In the clinic? Yeah. An abortion and... So it, it, it was induced? Yeah. Yeah. But the, but the bottom line was that it was induced to get rid of it? Yeah. At 24 weeks, that's illegal, isn't it? No, it wasn't then. But it is now? It is. Uh, I'm not sure now. I think they brought the, the time limit down now. In fact, I think uh, I would have argued I was 26 weeks. And before they would actually induce me, I would have to go to the Kiwi Hospital in Birmingham for a scan to see, to, for them to determine how many weeks pregnant I was before this private hospital in Birmingham would actually induce me. How did you feel afterwards? How did it affect you? Um, well, you tried to block it out. You have to block it out. You just tried to pretend to yourself that it didn't happen? Yeah. 
but even now, uh, 10, 12, 12 years later, um, it still comes back. Because the, the subconscious has a, has a nasty habit of creeping up while you're not looking, doesn't it? Yeah. And all I would say to, say to this, this, this lady is, please, before you decide anything, take as much advice. It may, the best people to advise you, or to, no, not that advice, is to listen to you. It's complete strangers, medical strangers. Don't, do not, please, make a decision now because she's so upset which is perfectly understandable i mean when when my i i lost a baby at four weeks old he was four weeks old when he died he was born very very premature he was very very tiny and it was because of the two abortions i'd had before which at the time i thought i was doing the right thing i could not afford to bring up a child i wasn't married etc you know all the you know the normal I didn't want to leave off the state and all that. I thought I was doing right. I thought I was doing the best for, for myself and for a child. But please, please, please do not just go to one person or one organisation and listen to them. Take... It, it, it's a big, very big decision. If she decides to to have this abortion or have an abortion, that is fine, but please take a lot, a lot of time. Because your actions now are going to affect... Affect your whole life. Your whole life. I mean, I... I... I I've been married three times. That's more than me, Linda. <laughs> Actually, I've just got married for the third time two weeks ago. Linda three, Ian two? Yeah, and I've just got married for the third time two weeks ago. And I suddenly think now I've, I've finally got it out of my system and I've finally got, I've stopped hating myself. So is, is that another thing to sort of think, to, to bear in mind? I mean, she says here that she's, she's 24, that things will change. Yeah. Maybe, maybe not in six months, maybe not in 12 months, but like in five years, things will be totally different. Yeah. And you have to think that far well, ahead. you have to think, I, I, I have just, it's been... Well, I'm, now, I'm 36 now. It's been 17 years for me to get over it. That long? Yeah. 17 years it's taken me to sort of come to come come to terms with, it, with the fact that I actually made that decision. I mean, I was I was young. I was got no money. I got. I got no, no, no man to stand behind me or nothing. The, it is a very, very, very serious situation. And I don't know who she is, but I wish you could pass on my phone number and, and let her ring me personally. And Well, I, I have no, there is no address on this letter, but yeah. if Marie wants to call us at any point, of course she's welcome to. But I wish you could pass on my phone number. And I would even go and meet the girl. I don't know where she lives. I would go and sit with her and talk to her and tell her, yes, I can understand how she feels, but there's a lot, it's, it's, it is far-ranging, there's so many other things to take into it, other than just the fact that she's, she's pregnant, she's found that her husband is bisexual, she's, she, she would probably hate the baby, that, that's how she feels now, but the, it, there's other far-reaching things. And I wish if she if she would only listen tonight, and if she would ring in, please give her my number. Okie dokie, we'll do and that, would, Linda. And I would go and meet anywhere or whatever, because it is so far reaching than that. Listen, we've got to move on. Yeah, but it must have taken a, a lot of uh, a lot of courage to phone up and talk to us about um, your experiences, and we thank you for that. Cheers, Linda. Right. Bye. Bye. There we go, Linda on the Midnight Line at Beacon NWABC. We're talking about a letter we've received from a lady called Marie who says, I'm 24 years old. I've recently separated from my husband after I discovered he was bisexual. I've also discovered I'm pregnant. I'm so confused, I don't know what to do. Um, I don't know if I could ever love his child. I've always been against abortion, but I'm so upset I don't know what to do. I'm writing to ask if you think I should have the baby or an abortion. Linda, they're telling us that as far as she's concerned, 
But what Marie should do is talk to everybody, but the bottom line, as far as Linda was concerned, is that you don't have an abortion, because if you do have an abortion, then the effects of it live with you for a very long time. Linda, they're saying that it's taken her 17 years to come to terms with the abortions that she had. One thing that Linda said is, uh, as far as she's concerned, it's probably easier to talk to strangers when we've got 30,000 strangers listening now. So, if you want to give your advice, 754123 in Wolverhampton, 236-235 in Shrewsbury. We'll be back to the lines after these. Nursing Care Midlands are the specialist suppliers of products for nursing and residential homes. All requirements are catered for, including incontinence products, waterproof bedding, capital equipment and medical sundries. Plus, there's a full range of furniture and hygiene products, and all with speedy delivery. And if you need advice, they'll visit you. Nursing Care Midlands are here to serve. So if there's something you need that isn't in stock, they'll order it for you. For reliable nursing products and professional advice from qualified nurses, call Nursing Care Midlands for a free catalogue on 0384 480099. That's 0384 480099. We've been out in the street asking you what you think about our travel service. Great. Very reliable. Makes me feel safe when I drive to work. Because they always get it first. They tell me about any accident. They seem to have the information before anybody else. Now, from Monday the 27th of September, something more to get you to work on time. The Beacon Radio Eye in the Sky. Yes, travel news relayed live from over the West Midlands. Sponsored by Blakemore Trade Only Cash and Carries in Great Brickland Street, Wolverhampton, Bromley Street, Lye and Blockswitch Lane, Warsaw. <laughs> Midnight Line on Beacon and WABC talking about whether a 24-year-old who's separated from her husband after discovering he was bisexual should have an abortion. She's found out she's pregnant by him. She doesn't believe that she could ever love the baby. She doesn't know what to do. She must be confused because she's just written to, to me, a total stranger, and just asked for advice, so fair enough. We'll give you advice. Let's hope it's good. Next on the lines, we've got Eric. Ken. Oh, that's Ken. We'll get to you in a minute. Eric's on this line. Good morning, Eric. Biggie. Oh, Good morning, Eric. Oh, the, oh here it comes. Oh, Sounds like he's in an iron lung, or somebody's just ripped the iron lung off him. Good morning, Eric. No, he's hurtling towards his phone at a speed of knots. Quick red rum before he starts. Good morning, Eric. Morning, Eric. Good morning. <coughs> what do you think she should do, Eric? Well, my advice, please, Marie, wherever you are, wherever you are, what you are and who you are, don't have an abortion. There is plenty of women in this world today, and there's some good women in the world today that cannot have children and will be very, very grateful to that child. Um, to lose, to have a child like that, the same as Lynn's had done, I mean, it's like losing, it's like losing one that you've already worked and reared and then died on you. I mean, my stepdaughter has died now 18 years ago, and my wife still hasn't got over it. So, I mean, that she was a girl of 26. But, no, Marie... I wouldn't have an abortion. There is plenty of people that would take the child off your hands. But isn't it her right to decide which circumstances she wants to have a child in? Yes. And it, I mean, these circumstances surely aren't right, are they? It, it is. It's her right to do what she wants to do. But she's got to stop to think she can't take it out of an innocent child for the sake of a bad, rotten husband. She must consider that child as well as him. Not for the bad that he's done it, that her's got to do bad by having an abortion. There's many who want us to ad adopt the child and save the child's life, isn't there? But do you think that the pressure generally is on to have an abortion rather than not rather than not to have an abortion? Is is, is abortion too easy, Eric? It's cruel. It's wicked. It's a uh, abortion is like the same as almost 
cutting a calf or a, sh- or a lamb out of its mother. So, I mean... Is it the behaviour of a civilised society? It is the behaviour, yes, it is. I mean, what she should do is, like Lynn said, she should go from the bottom of the ladder up to the top before her decides. And think about every option. And think about every option before her makes her decision. Right? Right. That's off her hands. Um, but it must be, I mean, it, it must be incredibly difficult for her, sitting there thinking, how am I going to live with this thing inside me? Well, she'll have that on her conscience now until she makes her mind up whether she has it. I mean, if she has it, she can forget it. She, it won't hang on to her, it, it won't hang on her life like for 17 or 18 or 19 years, will it? I mean, her child will be grown up by then. And she can see, uh, if she's going to, to take to the child, she can see what results she's brought into the world. But, uh... But it's a lot to expect a 24-year-old to handle, isn't it? Well, no, Ian, it isn't. Because I Oh, come on, Eric, it is, because if, if if you look at it, what should have been probably the crowning moment of their marriage has turned out to be a nightmare for her. Well... Instead of being able to enjoy pregnancy and, and to... It's got to be on her mind. It, every day after day, night after night, hour after hour, she's got to be thinking of it. But well, she could really go, she can start as she is now, she's written to you, so the best thing that she can do is get in touch from, uh, and, and go from the bottom to the top before she decides... And if she's not satisfied with the evidence that the, that the top one has given her, then make her own mind up that she has an abortion. But listen to all the advice. Pardon? Listen to all the advice. Listen to all the advice before she has it, because she might regret it. See, I don't know how true it is, because I'm a bloke and I've never been in the situation, but I suspect from, from listening, and, and maybe somebody would like to give us a call to confirm or, or say otherwise, is that once you start talking about abortion once you start going in into the the details of abortion you're almost on a conveyor belt because what? because there are, there are, the, the pressure is to have an abortion and you, once you're on that conveyor belt wham you're down there you're down that road and that's it yeah i quite understand what you mean but she's got to put up a fight against that and she's got to struggle she's got to fight it and the only thing she'll do is by getting to the top and get in the top advice of it. Now, I want to raise your your item to another case. I don't know whether you saw the news or not, but do you see where that man has got 12 years for putting that little baby in a bath of boiling water? I'm amazed he didn't get the death penalty. Uh, little, uh, it's little toes are stuck together the flesh of its little toes had stuck together, all the flesh had come off them. And all the flesh was peeling off her when they pulled it in, when they pulled her out of the bath. And they asked him when he, he was in court and all that he said was she dirted her napkin, he lost his temper. Yeah, I was watching that before and I, I came to the conclusion that scumbags like that don't deserve to breed the same air as us. This is where you can see what gets my temper, my royalty up, Ian. When they talk about one parent mothers, um, w- or ch- ch- um, one parent families, one parent family, even I've never, I haven't known a woman do that. I haven't known a woman, and I haven't known. It's no good saying I have because I haven't known a woman as would do a thing like that. So when they talk about the good men. There's good men and bad men. I don't think there's a good man on earth if, if he's looked at properly. You're pretty damning about mankind there, Eric. I've no time for mankind, even because they're the cruelest and the wickedest beast on earth. I don't think you can judge the entire race by one scumbag. Oh, they're all the same, Ian. There was another who throwed his child against the wall and killed it. Because he wouldn't stop crying. I mean... Yeah, but you, you don't see a mother do that. You don't see a... Well, you don't see 99.99999% of fathers do it. No, 
no, maybe you don't, but there's no, I've never known a woman either suffocate her child because it wouldn't stop crying or throw it against the wall because it wouldn't stop crying. What the hell is it, what are the people of the world coming to? Well, there was, a, there was actually a case last month where um, a woman suffering from postnatal depression threw a child off a bridge. Was that a woman? Yep. But Unfortunately. She must have been something gradually very, very wrong with her to do that. But she doesn't just lose her temper and do things like that. I've known mothers smack their children and then pitch a temper. But I've never known them um, severely do uh, damage like that to a child. And then he even had the cheek to have it once the water cooled down. He had a bath. Then he had a bath after when the water cooled down. God forgive him, I wish he died and right before they lock him up, after they locked him up. Listen, Eric, we're going to move on. All the best. All right, you. cheers. God bless. Ta -ra. Where's that Kenneth? He's next. Oh, good. Ta -ra. Cheers. Um, right, yes, OK, where are we? We've got them, The Adventures of Sharon and Tracy. Now, which one's this? This is Sharon, is it? Oh, I'm Sharon, love, yes. 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 <laughs> oh, God, it's been a terrible week, you know. You've had a bad week, haven't oh, you? Oh, God, yeah. We went down to the bit of fame, down in Glasgow, yeah? Down in Glasgow? Oh, well, up in Glasgow, whatever you like, Well, you yeah? really? Excuse me a minute. Yes, sorry. Yeah, well, it's not a tag there. Right, right. <laughs> well, we went up... Oh, Dan, what is this? To visit a friend. Well, we're on the motorway. away. Oh, that was a terrible week. Oh, her Sharon, right? She took a blood... Oh, great big abscess in the mouth. Oh, we God. had the dentist. You now, had the dentist? Oh, well, you got to went, yeah. She starts lighting it. <laughs> oh, yeah. You didn't, did you? No, well, not literally. Oh, well, I don't know about maybe she might if she was in that room a hell of a long time. <laughs> well, I suppose it's all those leather chairs and things. I mean, it turns well, a girl's head, doesn't it? She likes a bit of leather to say shares oh. <laughs> right. all. Oh, she does all. Right, well, what? anyway. Jackets, coats. Oh, anything. Trousers. She, does. she likes a smash. She's a weird girl, she is. Well, anyway, right, Sounds we're on like the way a total down. wonderful woman to me. Anyway, go on. Well, we're on the way down here, right? Before, hey, before we even left bloody shoes, the car broke down. No. It did, I tell you, I can't believe it. And her friends, oh, can I mention some names? Well, I don't want to mention names, but it's a cab firm called Bibi's. Well, you just did, yes. Oh, well, I did, yeah. Well, anyway, right. They come to her rescue. Lovely lads. Oh, lovely, beautiful lads didn't, they are. Didn't well, you find a man with an AA uniform? Oh, God, no, nah, the baby's mum's giving the best. Best service, I do. So yeah. to speak. Yeah, well, uniforms are bad. It's not leather. Well, baby's got leather seats, you see? Ah, well, oh. you can't argue with that. Them hard back seats, they don't have to turn hardly. They don't have to make you squeak. <laughs> well, anyway. I spent half the journey apologising, saying so sorry that wasn't me. So, oh, yeah, I know you mean, like, like, she did that all the bloody way she did. She's a class act, though, isn't she? Uh, well, she's terrible, she is, you know. So we get back on the motorway, get her bloody car fixed. Oh, sorry, my French. That's why you're an Essex girl, aren't you? Oh, right, hey, come on now. Essex is a bit marked. Well, anyway, right. Right. We get back on there. Well, this girl here starts moaning and whinging and oh my god. And you know, it's not that far to the Glasgow, sort of a couple of hours, you know. What, to Glasgow? Oh, Where are you, going? Where are you going by plane? No, actually, we can do it in her Ford Cortina in no time. Oh, you've got a Ford Cortina, Oh, yeah, it's a brilliant her Ford, yes. this, is, this is a, this is, might sound like a totally fatuous question, but do you actually have furry dice in the window? Hey. Are you slagging off her booty doll? No, 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 I wasn't. Hey, I, wasn't I, I didn't say there was. I was, yes. just, I was just asking whether or not you actually had that most necessary accompaniment to the car, the furry dice. The only problem with the furry dice is sometimes crashes with her shower's lipstick because it's so bright, you see. Have you, um, I, have you, hello, who's that in the background? Oh, that too. She's got a sore mouth because she's sitting here, right? I mean, all our bags for weeks. Since we got back, is my mind, my my mind. But now she's perked up like nothing in hand. Well, we had the car fixed and we got there. Well, she was a right so and so when we got there. Oh! In Glasgow? Oh, yeah, she's terrible, she is. What do you think of Scottish men then? How did you get on with Scottish men? Oh, well, I'll tell you now, right. Them skirts. What, them, you mean kilts? Them skirts are absolutely brilliant. <laughs> right, oh, skirts. Oh, they're lovely. Kilt. Oh, I Hey, oh, oh, look at her. Uh, that, 
Sing along. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Oh, no, come on, no. Don't do the sparring joke. Always oh, have the sparring joke. Is that the one? Did you, do you know how to tell the, um, which clan a Scotsman belongs to? Well, go on then, darling, tell me. Well, you look under his kilt, and if there's a quarter pounder, he's a McDonald. Oh. Donald, that's the best one, yeah. Did yeah, you, did, right, did, oh, yeah, did you find out whether or not Scotsmen wear anything under their kilt? Oh, Shaz did. She knew it all. She knows what they wear under the kilt, don't you, Shaz? Oh, yes, he does. Oh, oh no, bloody no. Oh, can hey. yes. The dentist, you know, boy. Right, the dentist, yes. When we got there, she was a pain, she was. She moaned and her groaned, and that was before she got on the chair. <laughs> Was it right? morning, well, can we speak to her then? Is she, oh, yes, she's she's come on now. Right. Right. You've got to go on now then, love, all right? A wonderful class act. Hello, this is um, Tracy, isn't it? Hello, yeah. Hello, and how are you? All right. You had an abscess. Oh, I did, yeah. Well, it's all cleared up now, thank God. That's all right, yeah. then. Painful I've had business. I've in my mouth a lot. The lot? Oh, it's been dreadful. I'll bet. Oh, I tell you what, oh, I've had all my painkillers, oh, I don't want to talk about it really. Did you fancy the dentist? I've perked up, I tell you, I've really perked up, I don't know why. Did it's you fancy the dentist? Oh, I tell you what, have you ever had Campari and lemonade? Mm, no, <laughs> no, oh. I haven't. You need to get yourself some of that, it's gorgeous. This, is, this perks you up, this is your, it your, does, yeah. your perking up recipe. With a slice of lemon and a, you know, a couple of ice cubes, See, lovely. you know oh. how to live, don't you? Oh, I certainly do, yeah. You are I a class do. act. There are not many people who would go on the radio and say, I drink Campari and lemonade. What's wrong with that, then? Nothing, nothing, yeah. nothing. There's not many what people who would... Uh, oh, I'm boring, I just drink lager. Oh, oh, well, I like lager and all, yeah. Well, well of course, oh, but I what I'm saying is that lager. there's not many people with love the class, it. you see, that would understand well, the no, see, Campari drink, and lemonade. The only thing is, I only drink Campari if a, if a gentleman's buying me a drink. And do you know many gentlemen? Well, a few, yeah. I've had a few. Yeah. <laughs> I've had a... <laughs> so to speak. Gentleman, that is. Buy me drinks. Don't yeah. be rude. Don't be rude. I wasn't. I'm hey. innocent. I have hey, the face hey, of an listen, angel. Right, listen, listen. I've got my mate here who wants to talk to you. Another one? Yeah, well, well, we, like I say, we brought her all the way down from Glasgow and she's Am dying I going to... to talk to you. Are we going to have to get a translator? No, no, no. You'll be able to understand what she says. Lovely, we'll put her on there. All what's, right, then, here we go, then. What's all she right. called? Yeah, all right, all right uh, glad you perked up after your abscess. Hello, dear. Hello. Hello, how are you, babe? And that, uh, what's your name? My name's Morag. Wee lassie. Aye. Do I... you know object to them referring to skilts as skirts? Oh, no. The best men are Scottish men and you can't beat them. Uh, you uh, can't, every time we play them at Wembley. I tell you now, uh, Sam, no taste. They come down there, may I have a wheel at the time, they do. What's that in English? Pardon? What, what, what did you just say then in English? Oh, don't you start now. Hey, come on now. They brung me, they come up to see me, and I took them down all the sites. The I sites? Terry Ackle Street? Pardon? Yeah, Glasgow. Yeah, I know Glasgow. Well, I come from down there, I. Ibrax Park. Ibrax, uh, you're dead. You don't even say it like that. Uh, right, okay. Right, just... yeah, well. uh, yeah. A Brooks. A Brooks, that's it. A Brooks oh, Park. Um, oh. Terry Ackle Street. Well, listen, the best street of all has got to be Sucky Hall Street. Sucker Hall Street uh, on a Saturday okay, night. The thing is, do you know the wee joke where the man, where the wee boy gets hit in Sucky Hall Street, but the policeman can't spell it? You see, right? right. So he takes them round to Hope Street because he can spell it. <laughs> It's a very good joke. That's a very good joke, but I just tell it badly. Well, listen, we're going to move on, Morag. Right. Right. But it's right. jolly nice to speak to you, and um, we'll, we'll arrange subtitles for the next time you're on. How long are you down here for? Oh, uh, well, uh, well, none of us are here next week, actually. We'll all be away. They're coming home with me for a wee week. So the following, probably Thursday, will be here. But I'm coming down after that for the first date for the fourth, for maybe two or three weeks. So it'll be the three of us, so I hope I can have a wee chat with you again. Absolutely. Aye. I've got it in my diary there, Morag. I hope I can. And you set us in nice and early now, all right? Man? Okay, and before you go, when you go back to Scotland next week, could you say to everybody in Scotland, from everybody at Beacon and WABC, we're jolly sorry about Culloden? Oh, I know what you mean. Hey, listen, can I just say one reason? Aye. I don't have anything about the, you know, the national anthem. Uh-huh. It doesn't bother me, really. Right? I mean, don't get me wrong. I mean, God save the Queen and all that, right? I, and, and you know, the Queen should be saved. 
<laughs> for a museum. And me, I'm just a mere person from the street, and I'm no, not God's the very person to say that. Right? Right, well, absolutely, and whatever so that what means. So what I don't so. like, right, is you English coming down to Hammerys. I don't see any of that at Hampton. That's um, the last remark I'll make tonight, mate. All no, right, no, 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 it's a bro break me like Nick and all that. Aye, whatever you say, darling. All right. I'll speak to you in about a week or so, all right? All right, then. I'll see you again. ta Bye-bye. Say bye, Charity. Ta-ra, darling. Ta-ra. Bye, bye-bye. There we go, the further adventures of Sharon Tracy and the uh, Scottish chum Morag. Riveting stuff. I actually understood most of what Morag was saying. Must have an ear for languages. Yeah. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Go on your feet. Now, we tried to get you on last night, didn't we? But we just failed because we ran out of time. That's right. Now, what was it you wanted to say? Well, uh, first off... I told the lads in the pub about this today and they didn't believe me. Well, it's true, I got you in black and white. Uh, first off, I'd just like to say, uh, I think it was Dawn that was on last night and said she was on £45 a week. Probably. It was a long time ago last night. Yeah, well, I can't see that. If if the child support agency is taken over, then uh, according to them, she should be on sixty five pounds plus what they're going to get off her husband, which makes it up to ninety five pounds, which is what the child support agency are asking me to pay to my ex wife. Ninety five pounds. Ninety five pounds. Now, have they have they worked this out? Well, apparently they say for my wife. Uh, and my daughter to live will cost them £63 something a week. Right. Uh, and they they times that by 1.5%. Any reason or they just felt like it? Uh, I don't know. That's the way the formula that they work on, uh, which makes it 95 Now, I earn £122. So if I pay out the 95 I've got to live on, what, 27 a week. A week. Just to, to reiterate that, you earn £122 a week.